This morning, and I suppose we can start by turning to Philippians. Um, we're going to address the question or the topic of entertainment. Um, this summer and last, we've been talking about uh, standards of separation from the world, and we've talked about drinking and our dress. Last week, we talked about smoking and drugs, and uh, this morning, we're going to begin talking about entertainment. Um, and I... I might not be right, but I think I'm probably kind of a real dull character. So I don't know, I'm sure I don't know all the different ways that we can entertain ourselves. Because, you know, I like to be entertained, but it's not, doesn't take much to entertain me, I suppose. Um, but uh, what is, let's, so I, I would just like to just, what are, um, in your minds, I think there's some things that will immediately come to mind, but then there's other things that maybe, along with me, you haven't thought of, but other people think of, of as forms of entertainment. So I have some listed, but I'd rather hear what, your, what yours are. And then um, my list is really, really, sh no, <laughs> I did think of some. But so what are, what are some forms of entertainment that uh, we uh, either enjoy or know about? Go ahead. Uh, Chris. I'm so oh, theme parks, okay, a theme park. Food. <laughs> oh, I think I don't. We don't want to talk about food. That's too. That just that strikes too too close to my to my stomach. So my heart. Uh, uh, yes. Facebook. Sports. Um, Brad. Reading. Yes. Movies. Yes. Music. Yeah. Carrie. Uh, like roller skates. Ro activities. YouTube. YouTube. Okay. <laughs> Doug. Bumper cars. Bumper cars? <laughs> How old are you, Doug? No. <laughs> no. Is that amusement parks, bumper cars? I'm sorry? Hunting. Hunting. Okay. So, the, yeah. So, some of these are um, things that we enjoy. And it might not be as much uh, an entertain. You can enjoy something that's not entertainment, but that's that's fine. Um, I saw a hand, uh, Cheryl. Oh, <laughs> thrift store shopping or garage sailing or uh, how did that go on Friday night? Um, yes. I'm sorry. Camping. Okay. Camping. In front of Mary, yes. Plays, okay, like like a theater type plays, okay. Mary, oh, she she stole your answer. Matt, television, okay, all right. So, um, there. A lot of you came up, there was a lot more there than I expected, let's put it that way. Um, one of the ones that I think we immediately would think of is television, or, and, and then all the, what, all the things associated or connected to television. Somebody said YouTube, which is like television. Uh, somebody said movies, which is kind of like television. And then there's, um, beyond that, uh, theater is, we would say, is not as closely related, but it's a similar type of a thing. Um, somebody said music. We talk. We're not going to. I don't know that this. Well, unless you have music television, um, that's. But music is entertaining also. It's kind of going to have its separate uh, place in our talking. Um, did anybody say radio? Radio. Okay, that's entertaining. Um, somebody said books. Um, Somebody said sports, Facebook, um, games. Did anybody say that? 
like games like uh, Pokemon Go. <laughs> um, or, uh, or other, I mean, there's, right, video games, but even board games, those are all forms of entertainment. Um, so, I have kind of a real um, random thoughts this morning. It's kind of just bombarded me, and I haven't figured out exactly how to uh, address all of this, but we'll just get into it and share some of them. Maybe it'll make more sense after uh, next week when we come back to the idea. But so, something about um, the way we consume information or me the medium that is used is interesting in our lives. And if you, do you understand what I mean by that? We, we'll use our eyes and we could read text. We use our ears, we could hear something. But when we can see a picture, seeing something in a picture form is different than reading about it. And um, there, there's, um, there's a man who pretty well spoken of who has written about the way we consume our information and all that, especially um, since the time that photography has been introduced to telling stories, the way the stories are told, the way the information is given, and, um, and, and even the, the amount and what has been, what is given has changed. Um, just to make it short, when we, when we consume information through pictures, which how do we, so if you watch the news, you're consuming information through pictures. If you watch, um, you watch, you pay attention to politics, most of that is done through pictures. And um, even, even a lot of people, well, we're recording this, but uh, even church religion, the old uh, TV preacher, uh, um, even education, all these things, all these things about our lives that people try to uh, communicate through pictures has changed the way we um, consume information. Just as an example from history, I like some history. Um, when, when Abraham Lincoln debated Stephen Douglas for the U.S. Senate seat, and I think it was 1858. Now that's way, way back. They had a debate. They had a debate. One of them, I don't know, one of them got up and spoke for about two hours, and then the other one got up and responded. Okay? Now here's the thing. That sounds bad. That sounds long. But think of the people actually sitting there. People were able to sit there and listen to the one and then follow his train of thinking for two hours and then listen to the other one and know whether he was actually responding to the one guy's uh, statements. Now, since that time, you know, television and pictures and all have been combined together. And now we get to a debate and we have 17 on a stage or however many, and they each get about three minutes. If they go longer than three minutes, we can't figure out what they're talking about. It's just too much. Okay, so the medium, the way the information has, is given to us affects our ability to understand it and also affects the message, okay? Uh, think about this. In the old days, people would read the news in the newspaper, and you'd have these long articles, and you'd actually learn something. You'd actually find out what's happening. Now... We watch the news, and we get the whole story in about a 90-second special. <laughs> that's not the whole story, but that's all that can, I mean, we've come so long, that's about all that we as consumers of information or whatever can handle. So I'm just, like I said, it's kind of random information, but a lot of us get, so, so I guess the point I'm saying is even our news is entertaining. It has to be entertaining. We, we complain about, you know, every newscast has some house that burned up or some flood that's destroying people's homes or some, something. It, why, why does the news have to have all this stuff, even if it's from, you know, 8,000 miles away from us, that there's nothing that we can do about it except go, wow. 
okay, the news has to have a wow factor because it's entertainment. Um, everything, so, so when we're watching something, oh, the, the, the nature of our watching uh, medium, communication, whatever, is that it needs to be entertaining, okay? Not, not in all cases. I mean, if you later on go onto YouTube and watch my, <laughs> this video, you know, it's not going to be much more entertaining than it is to sit here because we're not going to put, you know, stars and lightning flashes and all kinds of things in there. I'm not communicating in a way to be entertaining, okay? But if you're, but normally, if you're looking at something on a screen and, it's the, and it knows it's going there, it thinks, the people that produce it think this has to be entertaining because I have to hold people's attention. That's why our election process is going to be determined by, you know, 30-second information bites. You know, if it can say it short and, and, and powerfully, you're going to convince people. doesn't matter what you actually believe or what you will do. Just say something and say it short and quick. So I, the, I'm trying to lay a foundation here that our whole culture is very, very, very much affected by entertainment, even in areas of our lives where we don't think we're being entertained in the news, in education, we're, we're, entertainment is being used there to, in, in those areas. So I've found some statistics, and, and again, I'm not much of a statistic person, but two weeks in a row now I have some t statistics. So I've got some statistics on the amount of, and it's not all entertainment, but the, the media, media, um, that we consume or that we partake of. So the, the, the top level of um, media consumption in America is AM or FM radio. And 240 million American adults um, listen to AM or FM radio. Now I did a quick search, uh, quick calculations, and basically that's 100%. Okay, America has 323 or 324 million people in it, but um, that's including children. I think I was looking at the census, and if you take from 16 up, it's right at about 248 million people in America that are age 16 and older. So at 240, and these statistics are from 2016. Um, Basically, everybody in our, in our country listens to the radio. Uh, then, 220 in, in a month, at some time in a month, okay, these are statistics for a month, sometime in a month, 226 million Americans watch live television at least once in a month. Or, and this is technology, it's really something, or time-shifted television. It was live, but they, they DVR'd it, is that a term? They, they, they record it and they watch the live news at a different time, something like that. Okay, so 226 million Amer American adults watch, uh, watch live television. Maybe it's not news, maybe it's a show. Um, and, and 191 million adults in America watch, use, use an app or access the web on their smartphone. You say, well, that's different. Well, it's a screen, okay? I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm sure not everything that comes through that smartphone is entertainment, but we're just, there's 191 million adults using a smartphone. 126, 162 million um, access the internet on a PC. Uh, 158 watch time-shifted TV on a DVR, 106 million, I'm, I'm, my numbers, 158 million time-shifted DVR, 106 million consume media through a tablet of some sort, um, 93 million consume media through a DVD player or a Blu-ray, and probably those few people still watching um, Bet Betamax, is that what it is, or? or laser disc, the big laser discs, are in that group there too. VCR, all of that. 
61 million consume information or media through a game console. And then I don't, I think this must be the rest of them, 60 million a multimedia device. So almost our, our whole lifestyle has within it a, a real big segment of our lifestyle is connected to um, at least devices that can easily entertain us, okay? I have a device right here. Now, I try to use it for, to work, almost everything, almost, right? Okay, so am I lying to myself? I have the little, um, whatever, iPod Touch, okay? It's, I can check my email on it, I can respond to things there, but I can also just relax with it, right? Okay, so the idea of entertainment, the idea of this, uh, these types of um, things is, is all around us. Here's some interesting, another set of interesting statistics. Now, I'm just going to take that one, not the radio, but that, the top level of entertainment, we would say, media consumption, live television, or time-shifted TV, okay? On average, kids between 2 and 11 watch 20 hours and 22 minutes of that a week, okay? That's just television. There's also all those other categories. There's times estimates for all of that. On average, adults, 35 to 49, that's me, watch 32 hours and 7 minutes of television a week. This is inter these are interesting statistics to me. On average, adults 65 and older watch 51 hours, 32 minutes a week. Wouldn't you, before I said that, assume that the kids are the ones watching the television? But what is it? Actually, uh, teenage, from kids, it goes down in the teenage years. It goes slightly up in the early adult years, and then it goes up by over five hours a week to um, 25 to 35-year-olds. It goes up by almost, well, it goes up almost nine hours to the 35 to 49, goes up another 12 hours a week, 50 to 64, and from there up another seven hours a week, okay? So really, as we get older, we consume more of these types of things. On average, okay, so the average adult, taking all those ages and averaging them, the average adult watches 35 hours of television a week. And that's just television. So, and it's, it's higher than that because I didn't watch any television last week. So my little part makes everyone else's go higher. So, but on average in, if you take all those consumption devices and put them together, American adults watch, spend 10 hours and 39, 39 minutes a day with some type of consumption device, some consuming some type of media on average. That's more than half the time we're awake. You say, well, what, do these people even work? Okay. Well, what do they do at work? What is sitting on their desk at work? Okay, really, I'm just, and, and, and I'm not, and, and I don't think this is saying that they're watching YouTube videos the whole time that they're working, but they're interacting with a screen. Okay, this is screen time. So it might be skewed a little high, but um, as far as entertain, it all being entertaining um, time. But the point is, uh, one of the points is that this is all non-print media. This is not reading, okay? And reading is a form of uh, entertaining ourselves also. So what happens in this, in the area of entertainment um, along with other things, but at the area of entertainment, the way we work, the way human beings work is whoever creates the entertainment, their values, their culture, the way they think about the world is 
given to us. I'm not saying we necessarily swallow it all and believe it all, but it is delivered to us. The, whoever, creates the, whoever creates the media, and the media, and when I say media, I'm talking about whether it's the news, um, whatever, whatever it is, not just like uh, news outlets. I'm talking whatever it is that we're consuming in the, that's entertaining and other things, but particularly we're talking about entertaining things, whether it's a book. That person's, the way that person thinks about the world, the way that person, uh, his values and all that, almost not even, some of them do it purposefully, but, some, but if you're to write something and you're, you're a creative writer, what is, you are in that, right? That's you. You write an essay, that's what you think about something. You write a short story, that's what you think is a nice short story. It's you. So whatever values you have are in that. And so as a whole, whatever, whoever's, the values of whoever creates what we consume is we're swallowing that, okay? We're consuming it. We may not, we may, we may not believe it. We may recognize that that's different than what we believe, but we're consuming it. Okay? Does that, I don't think that we can argue with that because I'm not, I'm not saying that we're being changed by it yet. <laughs> I'm just saying we're consuming it, right? So that, whoever creates that, their culture, their viewpoint on the world around us, their standards, what they think is acceptable and is not acceptable, all of those things are communicated to us in this, and really, it's communicated to us. I mean, I think of um, something. I mean, even games. Okay, and this is actually something I don't hear it as much now. But people are all. Sometimes people get all upset about. Oh, what is it? Well, I, this is several years back. I remember hearing about. Is it Mortal Kombat or something like that, or Grand Theft Auto? Why are they concerned about that? Because they think that values are transmitted through just a game, and of course they are. Okay. They are. It's not, I'm not saying that if I were to sit down and play Grand Theft Auto, I would get up, run out, and go steal a car. Maybe Grand Theft Auto is not even about stealing cars. Who knows? But, but something is communicated to me, and I'm consuming that communication. So um, entertainment, and, and, and whether it is, and even, and I say entertainment, Things that, anything that's put on a screen has an entertainment um, value to it. It, it has to, uh, just because of the way visual communication is. Um, so entertainment communicates and transmits the person who created its culture, viewpoint, what we would say their worldview, their, when we say worldview, that's the way they think about life. Okay, we say, we say that we think about life this way. We say that when we look at the world, we're looking at the world uh, comparing it to what the Bible says. You th okay, but um, not everybody looks at the world that way. When you're consuming something, you're consuming someone else's viewpoint and their standards and all. So, um, so, we're taking in other people's thoughts. There's nothing wrong with that. Right now, you're taking in my thoughts. Okay? I'm not saying something's right or wrong. I'm just explaining the process. We need to understand what's happening, right? Does the Bible say thou shalt not watch TV? Television is not in the Bible. Game consoles are not in the Bible, right? All of these things, not, none of them, because our technology has advanced so much from the time when it was written, but the Bible still talks about it, okay? But not specifically. We have to understand, we have to understand what's happening there so that we can um, understand um, how, how we ought to think about it. So, um, now, as we finish up, We'll get to more conclusions, conclusive type things next week. But as we finish up, as we go, can you think of some verses 
Maybe you learned them before. Maybe you don't know the reference, but you know, there's that phrase. Um, I have uh, five verses, six verses that I've thought of and that are kind of, I, you probably would think of them also. But some verses that the Bible tells us uh, that verses in the Bible that will help us with our thinking about these types of things. Does anything come to mind? Bernard? Uh, the one that, the verse, I don't know where it's found. Sure. About uh, never let anything in your eyes, you know. To... Okay. So that is Psalm 101, I believe. I believe that's the one you're thinking of. We have time. Let's go ahead and look at Psalm 101. Now, if somebody else pulls one and I don't have the reference in front of me, I won't be able to do that. But Psalm 101, verse 2, I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. Is that what you're referring to? Yep. A froward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. Whoso privily slanders his neighbor, him will I cut off. Him that has a high look and a proud heart, will, I not, will not I suffer? Mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He that walks in a perfect way, he shall serve me. This, indicate, this seems to be a psalm that, that was written when David took the throne. Okay? But it doesn't, that doesn't set it. That kind of just explains some of the things he's saying, but it doesn't change the fact. He says, I will not will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. It's an interesting thought there. Levi. Philippians 4 8. Philippians 4.8. This is um, um, I did say we would be in Philippians when we started, didn't I? That was kind of that was his hint. Philippians 4, verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Okay, so this is a positive command, okay, that we should be thinking about the types of things that are true, pure, and all that. Obviously, we live in a fallen world, and our mind is going to have to about, think about things that are not true, okay? Somebody's going to lie to us, or we're going to see things that, but actively, right, we ought to be thinking about these things if there's virtue in them. Um, so this is kind of like fill your life with the right things because there's enough wrong things around us that we're going to have to endure. I would say that would be kind of the, the idea there. Anybody? Uh, Meadow. 1 Corinthians 10.31. That says um, about let everything... Um, 1031, I was, yes, whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. It's similar to Colossians 317. Which says, verse 17, and whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. All right. Uh, Mr. Leslie. Psalm 1, especially verse 1 and 2. Psalm 1, yes, where it talks about standing in the way of sinners or sitting in the seat of the scornful or... Um, I forget, what's the... I probably messed them up there. Walketh not. Walking, standing, sitting. Okay, now... That's, that's kind of negative, saying if somebody is, is, if somebody is scornful, all of that, you shouldn't be hanging out with them, okay? So if we are, and the application would be, we're consuming information if, we're, if, if, the, if we should stay, as far, stay away as much as possible from information that's created by people that are scornful and all of that, okay? Um, and scornful is not just a, an attitude, scornful of of the things that are right. God scorns scornful people. Um, the counsel of the ungodly, right. Thank you. Be holy for I am holy. Okay, that, that's, that's kind of way broader than just this area. Okay, so there's some verses. Um, you might also look at 1 Corinthians 6, 12. 
in 1 Corinthians 10, 23. Those are verses that say, all things are lawful unto me. They start with that, all things are lawful under, unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful unto me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. I remember I, I mentioned that one last week with the idea of a controlling substance like cigarettes and drugs. It won't be brought under the power of any. Something that might be allowable, but it might not be helpful. It's something that's expedient. Um, that's, a, that's an older word, but that means that's going to help me in a, as, as a Christian. Okay? So when, we, when we're consuming media, when we're, when we're playing a game, when we are watching a television show, it's allowable to do that. Everything's allowable, but is it helpful? Is it, is it, is it something some people just can't get away from certain things? So we're going we're gonna to proceed from there. We had just, like I said, kind of random thoughts there, some information, some kind of understanding how this works, and some verses that, are, that we can see are related, and hopefully next week we can bring it together and draw some um, tighter connections there and get a better understanding about the way we should think about entertainment and entertaining things. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you that we know... In your word is everything that we need to know in order to have a, a successful life, a happy life, a joyful life, a peaceful life. And we pray that as we study your word, we could gain a better understanding of the, 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 this issue and also conform our lives to what would be right in that way so that we can better serve you and better please you. We pray that you would be pleased and glorified in our, in our services today. We pray for the next hour that your word would be magnified and that as we sing and give our offering and hear music, that everything that's done would please you. In Jesus' name, amen.